Hello friends, welcome to today's lecture. Today we will discuss the Coriolis effect and I am on purpose calling it an effect because it is not a force, it is just an effect of the rotation of the earth and we know that our earth rotates from west to east. So what happens in Coriolis is that any body moving in the northern hemisphere is deflected towards its right and any body moving in the southern hemisphere is deflected towards its left. So, the, what the Coriolis is, uh, does is it only affects the direction of the moving body and not the speed because it is not an actual force, it is just an illusionary force or a pseudo force and this Coriolis is maximum at the poles and it is zero at the equator and we will look at why it is so towards the end of the video. So, uh, we will see why this happens. So, see we know that our earth is almost a sphere and on account of being a sphere, its circumference varies according to the latitudes. So, for example, at 0 degrees, it is maximum and it is approximately 40,000 kilometers and it becomes half at the 60th parallel and it is 20,000 kilometers approximately. So, from this information, we can calculate the speed also if we divide it by 24 because our earth completes a spin in 24 hours so and we know that speed is equal to distance upon time. So here on the equator we get a speed of approximately 1666 kilometers and uh, at the 60th parallel we get a speed of 833 kilometers per hour. So from this information let us look at a story. So for example there, uh, there is a person who got stuck on some forsaken island and now uh, to save himself he sends a SOS message and uh, uh, let us say he has a very very powerful catapult or a slingshot so and he ties his message around a stone and now he throws the message so now his message will be acted upon by two velocities one towards the east because the earth is rotating at 1600 kilometers towards the east and one towards the north because he is throwing it towards the north and uh, let us suppose he has a friend who lives at the 60th parallel so in a Russian city named Serov so it, since it is a Russian word we pronounce it, pronounce it as Serov and uh, you will be amazed to know that there was also one famous Russian painter with the name Serov anyway let us get back to the story so now when he throws his message there will be two velocity is acting on the message one towards the east and one towards the north. So now the resultant velocity would be something like this because a body cannot go in two different directions. So this would be the resultant velocity and this is what actually happens in the Coriolis also. So now uh, why do we need to study Coriolis in geography? This is because when we study winds we need to take into account Coriolis when we study tropical cyclones, when we study temperate cyclones or even when we study the ocean currents. So now let us see why it becomes uh, 0 at the equator. So in the formula of Coriolis there is a variable called sin theta and the value of sin 0 is 0 and as we go progressively towards the north the value of sin also increases and it becomes 1 at 90 degrees and the value of sin 90 is 1. So that is why the Coriolis becomes 0 at the equator and it becomes maximum at the poles. Now we will not go into all the variables because that is not required in geography. So we will just need to, we will just look at why it is maximum at the poles and minimum at the equator and see there may not be a direct question on Coriolis in the mains but this concept will be useful in prelims and also while writing your answers you will need to use the term Coriolis again and again in geography. So it is almost an integral part of geography. So thank you for watching this video and uh, please stay tuned I will upload more videos.